Fukushima. What part of Fukushima <laughs> do you not understand? <laughs> when nuclear contamination hits the fan, plutonium is everywhere. It's in the sea, it's in the air, and we don't even have any evacuation plan. Google Fukushima, take a stand. So the two major items, shut the Avo Canyon and yes. solar, bring Solartopia to Los Angeles. Yes. And we have now some, of the, some great experts, as they say, I'll talk afterwards. The first is Linda Seeley. Uh, Linda is a mother for peace, right. one of the oldest and most effective grassroots organizations in the history of the country, if not the world. When did the mothers start? Uh, 69. 69. So what is that? Uh, 45 years, 46 years. Amazing, and you're only 28, so <laughs> my mind. So uh, Linda is gonna talk straight from, from Diablo Canyon uh, about what's going on at Diablo Canyon and, and how we can shut it down. She is a veteran, she was arrested there. Your daughter was arrested too, right? And, uh, and, um, and soon your grandchildren. So come on up, come on up please. If you're welcome, a wonderful, great actors. Wonderful person, let me see you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here today. Um, I have a PowerPoint that I need to stick in the machine. Let's see if it works. Um, Let's see if it works. I'm gonna, um, okay. But uh, before we get that going, I just one. I brought a few um, things to uh, tell, share and share and show and tell. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, Mothers for Peace has made these Diablo Canyon evacuation zone. Um, signs that we've put up that uh, people have in their windows around the house, uh, their houses. And we're working on raising funds right now to buy a billboard space along the uh, freeway that says uh, the same thing. Hopefully one as you enter into the area and one as you exit. But um, a bill actually billboards are really hard to get. People um, uh, buy them up for years and years. This is a uh, poster from Harvey's in my uh, action, uh, it's a relic from the 84 action. Here it's a, uh, Diablo is um, titled The Museum of Inappropriate Technology. <laughs> it says, say no to Diablo, do something about it. This was called the People's Emergency Response Plan. This is the last big action we've had at Diablo Canyon. Um, and that was in 1984. It's the last big uh, civil disobedience that we had about, I think about a thousand people arrested at that one. Are there are more people have been arrested at Diablo Canyon than at any other nuclear site in the country. Uh, more than 10,000 were arrested there. That's still the record. Uh, we'd like to break that, but reactors are shutting so quickly, I'm going to have to, um, uh, maybe we'll do it at Indian Point. But, uh, um, so that's, that's a good thing to know. So I, just a brief introduction. Uh, this is the Mothers for Peace. We've been at it since uh, 1973 as legal interveners against Diablo Canyon. I'm Linda Seely. I'm a spokesperson for Mothers for Peace. I'm also a member of the Sierra Club Nuclear Free Campaign um, and a member of the uh, Santa Lucia Executive Committee of the Sierra Club. And so we work very hard on um, anti-nuclear issues up in our neck of the Sierra Club world. Okay, so here is our wonderful attorney. Her name is Diane Curran. She lives in Washington, D.C. She's been our attorney for about the past 17 years. Um, and she has, uh, we, we just filed this week, we just filed three contentions about the relicensing of Diablo Canyon. And um, Diane, I, I think we've got a couple of real winners in it. It's, uh, I'll talk about intervention in a little bit, but it's a, Intervention is very, very challenging because it's not something that you and I would think is um, rational. It's based on solely on law, not on rightness or wrongness or morality or immorality or anything like that. It's based on statutes and limitations and all that stuff. So we have to be very uh, careful. Um, and here we are, the, this is what we do. We are the legal intervener. We're the only, no, that's not true. Friends of the Earth just won status as legal interveners against Diablo Canyon, which is great because um, they, they're they pairing up with us to help in our efforts to shut down Diablo. But in order for them 
to be able to file as interveners, we already had to have our status, and we've had it since 73. Um, we, we are equally in equal in theory with the NRC staff, PG&E. We all get notices of anything that's going on at Diablo. And then we, we are, have appealed to the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board this week with three uh, contentions. And then we just have to go through this huge um, chain of appeals. We have won two, two cases in the U.S. Court of Appeals in our history. We've lost two, um, and the two that we won, the NRC didn't um, obey the ruling. Please go to our website, mothersforpeace.org, and we've got all of our contentions, all of the legal documents that you would ever want to see up there, as well as history and about our current um, uh, actions that we're involved in right now. It is our strong suit, Perseverance. Um, Many of our members of Mothers for, of our board are founding members. I am not a founding member, Hardy. Um, I've only been there since 82. And they started intervening in 73. But we, um, we do have new members, and we welcome new members. You do not have to, you can be a member. You cannot be an intervener unless you live within 50 miles of Diablo Canyon. But you can be a member of Mothers for Peace, and we welcome all new members far and wide. Do you have to be a mother to join mothers? You do not have to be a mother. You do not have to be a female. We have a couple of bills that have been placed in our state um, legislature right now. Uh, one is uh, in the assembly. It's AB 381. Um, we have a, okay. What, uh, all of you know about Diablo, that Diablo Canyon is built on 13 earthquake faults, right? <laughs> yeah. Two, two of those earthquake faults are major, um, and they're active, um, and they haven't, they haven't erupted for quite some time. And so, you know, it's not a matter of what, if they will, it's a matter of when they will, and we all know that. So we, in their forward thinking when they were licensing the plant and so on. Um, our state legislature uh, voted uh, to uh, supply funds for our emergency operations center in San Luis Obispo. That this is the off-site emergency operations center that is um, human by the um, county. And um, they're due to run out of funds in uh, 20, 19, but the plant licensed, uh, the two licenses for Unit 1 and Unit 2 don't expire till 2024 and 2025. So our, our um, assembly member, Akacho Asajian, has, who, who's a Republican, believe it or not, uh, but he, he does live there, has introduced uh, a bill to extend the, the uh, appropriations for that for our emergency services, which would be a very good idea to be able to have emergency services if, we, uh, if there's a problem there. And then there's another bill, uh, the Senate bill that was introduced by uh, Senator Monning, who is our Democratic representative from San Luis Obispo. And um, it's to extend the IPRP, which stands for the Independent Peer Review Panel, of the, um, that was appointed by the Coastal, I mean the California Public Utilities Commission to review, uh, this is uh, expert seismologists who review uh, the seismic data that both the NRC and PG&E uh, publish. And unfortunately, this IPRP uh, is also due to run out of uh, funding, and this is a bill to extend its funding too. They're they're due to run out at the end of this year, 2015. So this is a bill to extend their funding for another um, 10 years. But this IPRP is is turning out. We had very little hope for them to do a good job when when this started, and they're actually turning out to be very uh, good. And I'll tell you why. It's because Diablo or PG&E, you all don't have PG&E down here, right? <laughs> no, you got some, yeah, you got just as bad. <laughs> but PG&E is horrible. You, you all know about San Bruno, right? Oh, yes. Okay, okay so 
It's the same company that you know exploded, killed eight people, and blew up 38 houses. That they're they're also trusting to guard uh, a nuclear power plant on 13 earthquakes. Yeah. So anyway, uh, PG&E, uh, you know, we are entrusting with this time bomb on the uh, shores of uh, the Pacific Ocean, and um, they. Uh, getting back to the IPRP, what happened and what really pissed off the IPRP was that PG&E released a um, full um, seismic study on September 10th of this past year, of 2014. Just coincidentally, who'd have thunk it? The Nuclear Regulatory Commission released its report within one hour of PG&E's report, and the NRC reported that their, um, the past resident inspector of the NRC at, at Diablo Canyon, who had written a report saying that they should shut down the plant today because if there were an earthquake, the critical backup safety systems of the plant would not function properly, causing uh, potentially a meltdown. Um, and so the NRC conveniently debunked that report within an hour of the time that PG&E released its report saying, Yahoo, this is such a great plant. We've, we can withstand any kind of earthquake that would ever come on it. And um, they, they maintain this, this meme that they've created, uh, that PG&E has created. They, they are maintaining that with uh, you know, these uplifting messages to our community all the time about how safe we are at Diablo and how, um, you know, how great PG&E is and how much they contribute to our blah, blah. They give tours. And they do give tours. Yes, I've been on a few. OK. so. Yeah, radiation has problems. Um, it has health effects on people. The, there's a group in Santa Barbara with whom you should become familiar. They're called the World Business Academy. Have you heard of them? No. Okay, it's, not, it's a weird name, right? Um, but they have a safe energy project embedded in, in that. And they are dedicated to shutting down Diablo Canyon. Right. So not only do we have Mothers for Peace, Friends of the Earth, we have World Business Academy. They commissioned a health study by Joe Mangano. Anybody heard of him? OK. That was published last March. Um, and what it indicated, it was a study that compared rates of cancer before Diablo Canyon to rates of cancer after. And they found that there was a significant increase in childhood leukemia, breast cancer, thyroid cancer, and melanoma. Well, San Luis Obispo County has the highest incidence of melanoma of any place in the country, mm -hmm. or in, in the California, I'm sorry, which I think is, I don't know, inexplicable except for this. Um, so if you go to worldbusinessacademy.org, you can find that report in its entirety. And um, our local chapter of our Sierra Club filed a, a letter to with the county health agency asking them to provide health screening for these cancers. They refused to do it. They called the study um, junk science and uh, just basically threw it away. In San Luis Obispo County, we're up against, we're up against PG&E. We're up against a huge um, megalithic corporation. And so everything that we say and do for the past 42 years is um, quickly thrown aside by PG&E, and they come out with a with a PR statement within minutes of our saying anything. But but we do that with them too. Okay, so high level radioactive waste. Th this is well. Donna's going to talk to you about storage of high level radioactive waste. We have over 2,000 metric tons. Actually, right now I think we have about 22 metric tons at Diablo Canyon both in uh, liquid in pools and in dry cask storage. Um, the, I, I'm going to leave it to Donna to talk about um, the storage. But just know that here we have these you know, huge um, rods that are incredibly radioactive. 
uh, on being stored on these earthquake faults in pools and standing up like um, dominoes or uh, bowling pins or whatever right on the coastline for anybody out know If you had a, a shoulder held, what do you call those things, uh, where you shoot a missile, um, Rocket yeah, sort of a missile system. Uh, yeah, you could from a boat, you could just boom, boom, boom like that at those dry casts. Okay, so pg e is currently allowed to operate these things till 2024 and 2025, and then they apply to for 20 years more. That's why we, now, uh, that's why Mothers for Peace keeps on the relicensing issue because it cannot be relicensed. It cannot happen. But the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has never turned down an application for relicensing of any plant so far. So we're up against big odds. Um, but, and we want the damn thing to close now, right? Yeah. So we keep, you know, we keep on this track, this backtrack of opposing the relicensing and at the same time, we keep bringing up our, our new uh, issues uh, um, and organizing with other people, with other groups. How do they relicense so far? Yeah, isn't that weird? I mean, we have to relicense annually for real estate. Exactly. Licenses. And why would you apply to renew your driver's license, uh, you know, 15 years before it expired? Oh, things can change during those 15 years, but that's what they did. So we filed this alternative energy contention just this week, um, and this is really great. We didn't know uh, until about four or five months ago that the NRC actually has to do um, an analysis of the economic uh, reliability and feasibility of relicensing a plant. And they are, they are mandated to do an analysis of whether that it, the, the energy produced from Diablo Canyon can be met with alternative energy sources, and indeed it can easily. We hired a uh, legal expert, um, now I can't remember his name. Cooper. Uh, Mark Cooper, uh, thanks, <laughs> uh, who uh, did a great job analysis for us about um, providing not only the amount of energy it takes to um, that, that Diablo Canyon produces, but way more with um, uh, the sun and the wind and, and efficiency. How about that? Yeah. yeah. And then we also fi filed um, a new seismic, well, it has two parts, our new seismic condition. Just filed this one. Um, PG&E has, <laughs> it was so funny. PG&E did this, their, their, their um, Seismic report is like 1,146 pages long, right? They, they used all this data they had collected over like three to four years of blah, blah, the shaking, the quaking, the, the depth of the, um, of the faults and where they're located and so on. They did 3D testing on sh onshore, um, 2D testing offshore. Um, and they came up with, voila, oh, it can withstand anything. And the more data that comes in, the more they kind of change. It's, it's like the plant sort of morphs into something that's, that it, they didn't claim it was before. But, but uh, lo and behold, it's perfectly safe. So they, we, what happened is that they used only two um, data points when they made their analysis. They had like 700 million data points. They used two of them to show that um, that the, the, the backup safety equipment could withstand um, an earthquake. And then also there is a very serious problem with flood damage just from rain, if it ever rains again, um, to uh, the critical backup safety um, system. So. It's, um, these, these are very solid contentions that we filed. We'll hear probably within a couple of weeks whether or not they've been accepted. Ah, you've got to go, if, you, if you're a, like a, 
I mean, nuclear, anti-nuclear junkie, um, you should go to, Barbara, to the Senate hearing that Barbara Boxer held on um, December 4th, 2014. Dan Hirsch, who's from the Committee to Bridge the Gap, and he also is a contractor for Friends of the Earth, gave the most incredible testimony about the initial design uh, problems with, Di with Diablo Canyon, that it's, that the basic fundamental design of Diablo Canyon is a deficient and that the plant should have never been allowed to open. On that same clip, there's a, 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 a portion where our former state assemblyman, Sam Blakesley, or was he senator? I think he was assemblyman. Uh, who's a geophysicist, a geophysicist um, testifies to it's just stunning and fascinating. Okay, so here's, here's our campaign. Once through cooling. Anybody know what that is? Okay, so Diablo Canyon needs water to keep it cool, to keep it from melting down every day. So what do they do? They stick these huge pipes in the ocean and suck up 2.5 billion gallons of water a day that they suck through the plant. It kills every bit of sea life that it, it, it actually accounts for 80% of the loss of sea life along the California coast now. Um, and that is called once through cooling. Okay, so it sucks up and then it discharges back into the ocean 20 degrees warmer than it was when it came in. It's devastated the ocean floor around Diablo Canyon. It's just white and chalky now. And we don't know how far out it goes, um, but the marine, well, everybody knows how much marine life is suffering right now. And so, uh, in 2010, the California enacted a law to end the use of once through cooling. It's not allowed anymore. PG&E applied for an exemption to that law, which of course they got. And now um, we're waging a campaign um, to make them uh, have to comply. Okay, so what we're doing in coordination with uh, the uh, Friends of the Earth and the World Business Academy is that we're going to, but we can't do it yet uh, be because the State Water Board right now is under such stress because of the drought they were, this once through cooling issue was supposed to come up before them actually last month and it didn't, they put it on the back burner because they're so concerned about um, the drought. But this once through cooling issue is gonna come up here at the end of the summer and we, we wanna get a huge letter writing campaign to the California Water Control Board um, to get, uh, to make Diablo or PG&E build those, um, uh, cooling towers um, at a, a cost of about two to three billion dollars. The thing is this, if we get a, make enough impact with the State Water Quality Control Board to have them order PG&E to build the cooling towers, it will not be economically sensible for PG&E to do that and they will probably, we don't know for sure, but we are thinking that they will decide to fold the towel and forget about it with Diablo. Maybe not till the end of the license, but at least they'll state their intention that they're not gonna, that they're gonna withdraw their application for relicensure. So um, that's, that's our great hope. We have lots of allies, Friends of the Earth, World Business Academy, Nuclear Free California, who came to Ca uh, San Luis Obispo in January, and we had a great meeting together. Um, the Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility, some of you might know those people. They're from San Luis Obispo too. They work with the California Energy Commission and the CPUC. The Sierra Club Nuclear Free Campaign and three, 36 reactor communities throughout the nation. Our uh, attorney represents a lot of other reactor communities besides ourselves. And so we have a very good uh, fundamental grassroots network that's been developed over these many, many years. And we just need more people. We need more um, juice. Juice or juice? Juice. Oh. <laughs> I think we already have a lot of juice. <laughs> okay, here's what PG&E and the NRC does to resolve safety hazards. Their biggest one is the magical thinking. Woo. Yeah.
It's good. It's all good. It's nuclear power is green. <laughs> no carbon emissions, right? You're going to hear that from people. Oh, we need nukes because it, it's carbon free, right? Well, okay, tell me what happens when they dig it up, right. when they process it, when they ship it, when they fabricate it, when they build the plant with 700 zillion tons of um, concrete and piping and blah, blah. And then they, run, they create all this heat that they have to keep cooling down for the next 40 years all the time because if they don't try to cool it down, it's going to explode and contaminate the whole world. Uh, and then they have to take care of the waste for the next 100 bazillion years. But it's carbon free, so what a deal. And guess what? If we went, um, if we went with nukes as our uh, you know, portfolio, we have to open a new nuclear plant every month for 15 years. Well, okay, do the math, as they say. And what does Mothers for Peace do? Well, we do stuff like this. Um, and we, we go to schools, we go to community centers, we go all over the place and talk to people to try to get awareness raised. We're all part of, everything's connected. <laughs> nothing, nothing is in isolation. So, you know, that, that's why we need help uh, up there from you guys and women down here. We, we challenge the NRC and we put economic pressures on uh, PG&E. PG&E has to um, make a lot of changes uh, ordered by the post-Fukushima orders from the NRC. And that's gonna cost a bundle. Uh, the the eco economics is what's gonna shut down Diablo, ultimately. But we have to keep challenging the safety. Clean energy means never having to say you're sorry, right, Harvey? <laughs> okay, so how can you support Mothers for Peace? Well, go to our Facebook page. We post stuff there every single day, not only about us, but about Fukushima, about India, about uh, other countries in the, in the developing world that are being fed a nuclear power right now to be, because nobody will build it in the US. So what they're doing, they're shipping it overseas to places uh, where they, they buy the, the line for some reason. If somebody here has $3,000 that they'd like to donate to Mothers for Peace to pay for our first year of salsa, we would totally appreciate it. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. The time to make the break is now To wind and wave and solar power If we're gonna live Nuclear power must be banned Wrap your mind round Fukushima It's no time to be a dreamer Google Fukushima, take a stand right.